Hello. Welcome to Film Focus Recaps. In the 26th century, a group of alien races come together to form a military alliance called the Covenant. Their goal is to find the superweapon known as Halo to kill all humans. Meanwhile the humans leave Earth and form a colony on the planet Reach. The UNSC or United Nations Space Command starts a program to train Spartans, super soldiers who are genetically modified to be superior. During his last mission, Master Chief also known as John had his body taken over by an AI known as Cortana to be able to defeat the enemy. Now he's on the verge of death, so while doctors take care of him, they have to sever the connection with Cortana to save him. Six months later, John and his team of Spartans have a mission in the Branda system. At the local village, soldiers are trying to evacuate the people. They explain it's only temporary until the danger has passed, but the leader known as the mother refuses to leave their land and when the soldiers try to force them, the people riot. As the Covenant forces arrive on the planet, John and another Spartan search the area and find a few soldiers lost in the fog, which causes their communicators to malfunction. Suddenly a soldier sees something in the fog and disappears, so they try opening fire to no avail. More soldiers get snatched until there's only John and Perez left. At that moment John can smell the creature and moves out of the way right before it attacks. A fight starts between them and Perez tries to shoot to help, only to get knocked down. John immediately retaliates and after some struggle he manages to kill the alien. Then he searches for Perez in the fog, only to be attacked by more aliens. John fights them all without issue, killing them one by one with no mercy. He continues his search and finds the bodies of all the soldiers plus Perez, who is hurt but still alive. Suddenly a bunch of aliens including the mighty Arbiter surround them but instead of attacking they go away, and John sees a mysterious figure standing nearby. At that moment the Covenant forces attack with huge energy beams that start destroying the planet. Most of the locals are finally scared enough to rush to the spaceship to evacuate, but the mother and her followers still stay to meet the planet's end. When they return to headquarters, John talks to Ackerson, the new boss in charge of the Spartan, and tries to explain that the Convenant are preparing for something big. However Ackerson doesn't believe John's story about those aliens suddenly disappearing and thinks he's having hallucinations as a side effect of Cortana. Afterward John secretly visits former Admiral Margaret, who is now just a civilian. She asks him to find more evidence of Covenant's plans and to bring it to her, and she promises to believe him in return. Meanwhile on the rubble, former Spartan Soren and his crew free a criminal named Felix from prison because he claims to know the location of Dr. Halsey, the woman who had started the Spartan program and is now wanted by the law. Following Felix's directions, they find a destroyed ship and Soren and Felix suit up to go investigate. After crossing a dangerous bridge, they make it to the cargo hold, but when Soren opens the capsule it's empty. At that moment his spaceship goes away and a bunch of soldiers appear to arrest Soren, revealing this is a trap by Felix who wants to get the bounty on Soren. In a secret location, Halsey interrogates a young girl named Julia about what happens when she leaves the room. Julia tells her about a hallway and several rooms that she isn't allowed to look into. Before the doctor can ask for more details, Julia's nose starts bleeding and she dies. Sometime later, Halsey tries questioning a new Julia, but the same happens, her nose bleeds and she drops dead. In a refugee camp, a man is scanning all the locals to find indentured slaves who should get back to work. Juan hides in a tunnel and tries to take the tracker off her ear, but unfortunately she's caught red-handed and has to run away. When a man corners her on a platform, she pushes the guy to the ground. Another guy continues to chase her, so she breaks a bottle on his head to bring him down. More men come after her, thus Quan jumps into the trash tunnel to escape. Then she removes the tracker and hides. The men soon arrive and begin looking for her, but when a guy turns around, he discovers Quan pushed his partner out into space. When Quan tries to sneak out, the last guy jumps on her, so she stabs him in the head with her tracker. Afterward Quan meets with Soren's son Kessler and tries to tell him he and his mom are in danger. When Kessler says his dad will protect them, Quan has to inform him that Soren isn't coming back. At the same time Soren's wife Lyra is getting suspicious of her husband's crew, who promised they would look for him but they aren't making much effort. At headquarters, John admits to fellow Spartan Kai that he thinks the mysterious person who made the aliens leave during the fight had been Makey, his ex-girlfriend and member of the Covenant who was supposed to be dead. At that moment John sees an employee change the sign on the Cobalt team to standby, which doesn't make sense because they're supposed to be on a mission. John goes to ask Ackerson about it, but he dismisses his worries. Meanwhile Spartan Riz trains in the facility while trying to hide her injuries. She doesn't want the others to know or they'll think she's weak and take her out of missions. Later during a training exercise on the field, she's too slow yet denies it, so a Spartan brings her down with a shot. Desperate to prove she's fine, Riz climbs away and opens fire to distract them before running again. She continues to be slow and clumsy, so this time she falls on her own. Later, Riz finally agrees to see a healer. Back to Halsey, she watches how employees take the dead girl away and talks to Ackerson, who is the guy keeping her in that house. However Ackerson refuses to answer her questions and brings her a new Julia clone to be her attendant. At that moment the tree in the room catches on fire, but Ackerman just leaves, revealing Halsey is in a harmless hologram room. 
Afterward Ackerson goes to the room where he's keeping a keystone, which is a gadget that can give him access to Halo. When he's about to grab it, Cortana appears to inform him she's finished the simulation he asked for. Her calculations indicate there's a 97% probability of something bad happening, so Ackerman concludes there isn't anything they can do to stop it. In the evening John visits Perez to ask her why she isn't backing his story about the aliens leaving the battle. Perez admits she did see them, but she feels guilt because all of her men were killed and she can't explain how she survived. Then John returns to headquarters and checks the progress of the Cobalt Squad, only to learn they never left the planet. He realizes the Covenant are disrupting communications before destroying planets and their next target is Riak. Desperate, John lies to his team and tells them they have permission to save Team Cobalt, so they take off. Seconds later the Covenant arrive at a base on Reach and start killing soldiers, who can't do anything against such powerful aliens. Makey is leading the attack and opens a door to steal a Halo Keystone. Soon John's team lands on Reach and tries contacting Team Cobalt to no avail. They search the area and enter a building. They notice some abandoned food, which means the people here left in a hurry. When they activate the power, a weird noise with garbled voices can be heard on the comms. John recognizes it as the noise he heard during the last attack. At that moment they hear thumping coming from the basement so they go investigate. Meanwhile Perez falls asleep on her desk while listening to the recording from her last fight. She's thumping her finger in the same rhythm as that noise John heard in that basement. Suddenly a Covenant voice wakes her up. John's team approaches a mysterious door only to suddenly be surrounded by soldiers who arrest them for taking a ship and weapons without authorization. John opens the door anyway, only to find the room empty. When John's team returns to headquarters, Admiral Key scolds them for insubordination and suspends them all. John is sure that Team Cobalt had been in that building, and Key shows him the flight path proving the opposite, John says he saw a different file and that someone changed it. Keyes decides to submit John to neurochemical monitoring and his team doesn't know if they can trust him anymore. Moments later two guards escort John to his psych evaluation, but as soon as they enter the elevator, John knocks them out. At the same time Kai tries to explain to Ackerson that the rest of the team had been tricked by John and they hadn't known the mission wasn't authorized. Ackerson doesn't care and informs her that John has escaped, so Kai volunteers to help. Meanwhile Team Cobalt has been found dead near the building John searched. Ackerson says they'll officially list the bodies as MIA, causing Keyes to get angry because John had been right all along and obviously Ackerson knew it. However Ackerson calls the Covenant's arrival inevitable and even admits their superiors already know about the situation. If they send out an alert it'll cause chaos and panic, so it's better to start getting ready for an evacuation quietly. On the rubble, Lyra is suddenly dragged into a tunnel so she tries to defend herself, but it turns out to be Quan. She warns Lyra that she's in danger because Soren's crew was bought off, so Lyra needs to leave with Kessler immediately. Lyra rushes to her home and finds the crew playing with Kessler. They inform her they've fixed the ship and they can go looking for Soren together, but Lyra turns them down and makes them leave. Later Lyra, Quan, and Kessler sneak around and wait for a large group of people to get into the boarding area so they can hide among the crowd. They manage to get into Soren's ship and take off, but Soren's old crew sees this and closes the gate. Desperate to save her son, Lyra gives Quan her necklace to buy tickets and makes her promise to get Kessler out. Then she gets off the ship and attacks Soren's crew. Unfortunately she gets quickly overpowered and captured. Then the crew interrogates Lyra while a strange clanging sounds in the background. The crew is tired of being poor while Soren's family lives well so they want the money, but Lyra genuinely doesn't know what they're talking about and thinks they're being manipulated. While some crew members go to investigate where the sound comes from, the others throw Lyra into an airlock to make her talk, but she can't tell them the location of something that doesn't exist and eventually passes out. When Lyra wakes up, she finds Quan with a bloody knife in her hand, revealing she had made the noise to attract the others and kill them. The last crew member tries to ambush them, but Quan quickly kills her as well. Sometime later, Ackerson goes to say goodbye to Halsey, who decides to tell Ackerson all the details of how his sister Julia died because her body couldn't stand the Spartan augmentations. An upset Ackerson leaves without a word but returns a second later to leave Soren with her. Meanwhile John meets with Margaret and tells her what's going on. He wants to warn everyone about the Covenant coming, but Margaret asks him to stay quiet for now and play along with orders. John realizes she never truly left the organization and leaves in a huff. Afterward John goes looking for Perez and finds her at a church. Perez admits she also saw Makey during their fight and that she hasn't been able to sleep since then because she can't get the sound out of her head. Then she gives John the recording from that fight. It's not just interference or a sound, but something underneath, a message in the Covenant's language that she translates into a threat to kill all humans. At that moment a blast hits the church and soon explosions are going off all over the city. People start to panic and run all through the streets as houses are burned down and death covers every corner. Perez runs to her house but John stops her just in time before she gets burned too, and he points out her family is gone. As Perez has a breakdown, a Covenant soldier attacks people while wearing active camouflage, but John can see it and tackles the alien through a window. A fight ensues and after lots of struggle, John manages to break the creature's neck. 
As power goes out in the colony, the room with Halsey and Soren loses the hologram, revealing they're inside a cell. Since alarms are down, they come out to investigate and realize they're at headquarters, meaning Halsey knows the way and guides them. Eventually they find a bunch of soldiers killed by plasma and take their guns. Then they take another corridor and find the room with Cortana, who tells them to run. Suddenly Cortana disappears because Makey picks her up and goes away while sending in an alien to attack, so Halsey and Soren have to run away fast. Back to John and Perez, they run through the city and watch how the Covenant destroy everything around them, so they have to dodge lots of shots and explosions. In the sky they can also see ships evacuating people from headquarters. After lots of running they find Riz and other soldiers doing their best to fight back, so the duo grabs some guns and joins them. The group has lost communication with headquarters, so John convinces them to make a plan to push through and make it back to base. After shooting a lot of enemies over a wall, the group sneaks inside a building, where they are surrounded by a bunch of aliens. They manage to shoot them down but lose some soldiers in the process. John breaks a window so they can jump out but Riz takes a moment to grieve for a lost friend, then she throws a grenade at the incoming alien backup and jumps out as well. At that moment a bigger alien known as Wraith appears, so the last soldier decides to join his fallen comrades and volunteers to run toward the Wraith with some explosives. The creature dies and now John, Perez, and Riz can keep going. Soon the trio makes it to headquarters, where dozens of soldiers are being treated for wounds. John and Riz want to suit up, but they learn Ackerson left with all the Spartan armor. Kai isn't around either, which is strange. John goes to confront Keyes, who explains that Team Cobalt's defeat left a blind spot that allowed the Covenant to land. The decision was made to let Reach fall, so all major personnel and fleets are gone and the Covenant are hitting all the power stations. Keyes still wants to fight but their priority should be the evacuation, so he shows John a plan to proceed. As Reach continues to fall, most of the soldiers head out to continue the evacuation while others join John and his fellow Spartans Riz and Vanek to make a stand outside the bridgehead. At headquarters, Keyes is found by Soren and Halsey and he agrees to take them to the evacuating transport. Halsey informs Keyes that Makey is alive and has Cortana. While the soldiers on the bridge open fire on the incoming aliens, Keyes' group makes it to the hangar. Soren hears a weird noise and suddenly a bunch of elite aliens attack, causing chaos and death to ensue. Keyes asks the bridge team for help, but they also have their hands full. The normal soldiers tell the three Spartans to go protect the civilians because they can hold the bridge in the meantime. At the hangar, the few soldiers there are trying their best to defend the ships. The civilians are all aboard but the fuel lines are still connected, so Keyes has to leave the transport to disconnect them. He manages to push the button easily and the pipe falls, spreading fuel on the ground. Then he's surrounded by aliens, so Keyes tells Perez to pilot the ship and leave without him. As the ship takes off, Keyes lights his pipe and causes a huge explosion that brings down all the aliens in the hangar. Halsey, Soren, the Spartans, and most of the soldiers manage to hide behind the gate just in time and survive the explosion. The group watches the burning city, but at that moment another explosion starts another fight. No matter how much they shoot, the aliens just keep coming, and John jumps in to fight the Arbiter hand to hand. He manages to steal a plasma sword only to be quickly shot down, and when the Arbiter is about to finish him, Mickey shows up to stop him. Vanek tries to use the distraction to attack the aliens from behind, but the Arbiter is fast and kills him first with an exploding dart. Makey leaves with the Arbiter while John's team has to keep on fighting incoming enemies. After lots of shooting, things suddenly go quiet, and an extra dangerous alien falls through the ceiling. The soldiers work together and shoot at the same time, surrounding it with fire until the enemy goes down. Then a ship appears near the hole in the wall, it's Lyra, who opens the door for them. While the soldiers rush inside, Quan uses a machine gun to fire at the aliens that keep coming. However Riz refuses to leave Vanek behind and runs into the smoke. Seconds later she comes back with Vanek's body on her shoulders. Unfortunately an alien still manages to hit her on the back and she falls, so Quan and Lyra rush to drag her body inside. The ship takes off while John watches the city go down before passing out. Halsey runs to his side while John has a flashback of the time he almost died six months ago. Cortana begged Margaret to save John, and Margaret agreed as long as Cortana did something for her in return. In another ship, Makey watches Reach burn before telling Arbiter that she has to access Cortana to find Halo's location. After many failed tries, Cortana finally appears in front of her, but refuses to share any information about John. Makey gets angry and threatens her, but Cortana just disappears. When John awakens, he sees Riz has been intubated. Halsey informs him Riz will need surgery to live, but she doesn't have the tools to do it here. She also reveals John just woke up from a two-day coma and they haven't gotten in contact with any other teams or ships yet. A desperate John wants to go back for any survivors, but Halsey tells him there aren't any. Then John passes out because of a fever and sleeps for another three days. They still can't make contact with anyone, so for now the ship lands on a mining outpost called Illyria. Halsey takes Riz to a hospital to do the surgery while Soren and Lyra look for their son, who supposedly is hiding on this planet. The couple enters a shop and pays the clerk for information about their son. 
Afterward they get on a truck to go to the right address, and as a way to grieve for their losses, Lyra takes off her wig and throws it away. Eventually Lyra and Soren arrive at a plant and find a house inside. The women who open the door refuse to give them back the kid, saying he's theirs now. Lyra gets furious, so Soren drags her out and asks her to leave negotiations to him. While Soren offers a heartful speech to the women, Lyra hears a noise and follows it to find a boy with a helmet. However when she removes it, she discovers it's not Kessler. The boy says he saw Kessler in the ship and he was taken away. Moments later Riz wakes from the surgery. Halsey explains that she did everything she could but the damage is significant and she won't be the soldier she was before. Meanwhile Quan drags Vanek's body uphill and digs a grave for him. Suddenly she's surrounded by a group of people in red cloaks. John hears Quan shouting and runs to help her. It turns out the locals are against burials and think Vanek should be burned so he can find his way. John doesn't understand grief and tells Quan to put Vanek in the sky. Soon Riz and Halsey join them and after sharing some words, John is the one to light Vanek's body on fire. While watching the flames, Quan hears a voice telling her to join them. Suddenly the mother appears in front of her and everyone else disappears, making her realize she's on a spiritual plane. The mother explains she speaks for all the planets and scolds Quan for forgetting where she comes from. She tells her the monster is close and begs Quan for help, calling her a protector. After seeing a mysterious vision, Quan is back at the funeral. Back to Meiki, she's shocked to see they're going back to Covenant headquarters. The Arbiter explains the fleet was recalled because their superiors consider their mission failed. An argument ensues between the Arbiter and Meiki, who explains it's them who have the necessary power and not the priests. The Arbiter thinks she's trying to manipulate him, but at that moment Cortana plays an image of the Halo. Meiki uses this to make the Arbiter think he's causing this because it's his destiny just like hers. Convinced, the Arbiter steers the ship away. The next day, Lyra returns to the shop and covers a bat with barbed wire to threaten the clerk until he confesses the truth, it was the UNSC who took Kessler. Meanwhile Riz has to move around with a cane and continuously feels pain, so she informs John she'll stay on that planet because her fight is over. John is devastated because Riz is all he has left of his team, but Riz says goodbye to him with a hug. At a training facility on Planet Onyx, Ackerson watches Kai put on her Spartan suit and meet with thousands of soldiers who accept her as their leader. He's successfully manipulated her by making her think all the other Spartans are dead. One of those soldiers is Perez, who joins a smaller team on a mission to take down a Covenant ship by deploying a virus. The group jumps out of a ship and the Covenant immediately open fire on them, bringing down a few soldiers. The remaining fighters manage to get inside and an intense battle ensues as more and more soldiers are brought down by the enemy. Perez manages to run fast enough to reach the console but when she's about to inject the virus she's shot too and wakes up in a chair, revealing this was a training simulation run by Kai. She scolds the team for not working as a team and puts them through the simulation again. Perez doesn't follow orders because she thinks following the same plan will make them fail again, and this time they manage to finish the mission. Back to John's team, they arrive at Onyx and quickly split. Quan continues to see the mother among the trees so she follows her while Halsey tells Lyra where to find Kessler before leaving the group as well. John tells the couple to go find their son while he comes out to fight the soldiers patrolling the area. He defeats them all in seconds without breaking a sweat, however a bigger army soon arrives and arrests him. Quan is still running through the forest and sees the mother standing next to a well, so she jumps into it and is caught by a weird light. There she finds Halsey, who reveals this is where everything began. As they explore the area, Halsey explains that she lived in this underground facility for around two decades. However she soon gets lost, claiming the facility has been changed. Quan sees the mother guiding her, so she follows her with Hansley behind her. Eventually they find a lab where Hansley's old team is secretly carrying on her research. On a mysterious structure, they found a DNA strand that was a mix of both human and the Covenant. When Quan touches the structure, a little gem starts glowing. She takes it out and a star map appears in front of them. As she moves the gem around, she activates the map's secrets and opens the structure, revealing a light bridge that takes them to an ancient lab. They find the remains of a scientist who appears almost human, but when they touch it to grab a little box, the building starts shaking. The group runs away and reaches the other side right before the light bridge disappears, seeing in the abyss a huge alien city. Meanwhile a priest finds the Arbiter and Meiki, intending to kill them for disobeying orders. The Arbiter manages to scare him away, but he demands Meiki to solve things soon. Meiki swears she can control the keystones, but once the Arbiter is out of the room, Cortana appears and says she knows Meiki's lying. It turns out Meiki needs to be with John to reach Halo. Cortana offers her help to Meiki but in return she requests to be connected to the ship's system. Meiki is suspicious of Cortana's motives but has no other choice. In the training facility, soldiers take John to a cell to chain him up, but he quickly defends himself and brings them all down in a matter of seconds. All this is recorded by the security cameras and Ackerson shows it to Kai, saying John is working for the Covenant and he's here to steal the keystone Ackerson managed to smuggle out of reach when he escaped. John leaves the cell and carefully sneaks around until he finds a computer room, where he's confronted by Kai. 
He tries to explain that Ackerson has manipulated her, but Kai doesn't believe him and starts fighting him. They're both Spartans with the same augmentations, but Kai has her suit and John doesn't, not to mention he doesn't want to hurt her so he isn't using his whole strength. Kai overpowers John and beats him up, leaving his bleeding body on the floor before exiting the room. At that moment the computers at the facility start failing as Cortana suddenly takes over. She appears before John and tells him she's with the Convenon, so he needs to find the keystone to connect with Meiki and stop her. Then she appears next to Margaret to give her an update, and Margaret reminds her of their agreement, Cortana must stay with the Covenant and continue to spy on Meiki. Meanwhile Kai confronts Ackerson because she's realized he manipulated the training simulation. As he offers another manipulative speech, Kai realizes John had been telling the truth. Ackerson admits he lied and Kai rushes out to help John. Speaking of John, he moves through the facility without issues because Cortana opens and closes any door he needs to keep him safe. On Meiki's ship, the priest discovers the transmission sent by Cortana and orders the Arbiter to kill Meiki. However the Arbiter refuses to obey and ends up fighting the priest's guards. As chaos ensues in the ship, Meiki notices her keystone glowing and crawls to it at the same time John finds the one at the facility. John's and Meiki's consciousnesses appear in Halo, and John asks Meiki not to help the Covenant because they'll eradicate humanity. However Meiki doesn't want the Covenant nor humans to control Halo, she wants John to join her there and build a new world together after destroying both races. At that moment soldiers of both sides threaten to attack them, so they both let go of the keystones and the resulting shockwave pushes everyone away. The Arbiter continues to fight the guards and Meiki grabs Cortana to run away. The priest chases after her, so Cortana appears in front of him to distract him. Meiki uses the chance to stab him from behind, and Cortana confirms that thanks to Meiki's talk with John she's found Halo's location in the map. Afterward Meiki thanks the Arbiter for defending her by getting his symbol on her chest. At the training facility, the technicians track Cortana's transmission to the Covenant fleet and Margaret orders Ackerson to prepare the soldiers for an attack. Meanwhile a bunch of soldiers surround John, however they refuse to follow their general's orders and leave. The general is furious but before she can act, Kai knocks her out from behind. Moments later the soldiers that went after the Covenant are completely obliterated, and Margaret decides to send another team. Ackerson protests since they're wasting resources, but Margaret says she's willing to sacrifice their entire army to stop the Covenant from getting to Halo. Meanwhile Soren and Lyra follow the directions Hasley gave Lyra, but when Soren sees where they are, he quickly drags his wife away. It turns out this was the arena where they threw kids to train them into Spartans, and Soren remembers that Kessler always wanted to be one. However Lyra refuses to leave because she doesn't want her son to become a mindless killer. When a bunch of kids appear in the arena for brutal training, Soren jumps in to fight the incoming soldiers. Unfortunately while he's fighting, the soldiers use the chance to capture Kessler and Lena and run away. Soon John finds Ackerson and starts strangling him until Ackerson reveals where he has kept John's suit. On their way out, Ackerson reveals that Margaret is a liar and that the virus that the fleet will use on the Covenant is bigger than they were told. Once activated, it will burn everything within a million miles, both Covenant and humans. After John and Kai get their suits, John demands Ackerson to confront Margaret. Ackerson does so, but Margaret just makes her guards arrest him. This distraction is enough for John to steal a ship and fly toward Halo. Before leaving, he talks to the entire base through the comms to confirm he's alive while Kai leads the soldiers on the mission. Suddenly John is surrounded by darkness and a mysterious voice tells him about something dark and sinister in a distant facility. In the underground lab, the team opens the box and discovers there are active spores on it. Soon a lab assistant starts feeling unwell and she attacks a co-worker, stabbing him in the neck. The other scientists have to pull her back to stop her from causing more damage. Meanwhile Quan reunites with Soren at the ship, where he's gathering weapons to go save his family. When Kai's team makes it to the location of the Covenant fleet, an explosion hits their ship and sends them hurtling into space. After some desperate floating around, they manage to control the suits and get information to soon land on a Covenant ship. The team gets inside but barely gets to explore before the enemy attacks them. They try their best to defend themselves, but the aliens keep coming and they're starting to run low on ammo. Kai requires backup, but Margaret refuses to send help because she wants the priority to be Halo. Meiki sees they're getting surrounded by humans and asks Cortana for help, but the AI refuses so Meiki destroys the device to delete her. Feeling guilty, John decides to go save Kai's team instead of going for Halo. Kai and Perez get separated from the group and try to fight back with the alien's own weapons, but they're still surrounded. When they think it's over, John shows up and starts killing aliens with amazing combat skills. Once all the enemies are down, John carries a wounded Perez away but Kai stays behind to finish something. In the facility's prison, Kessler, Ackerson, and Lyra notice the crazy lab assistant in another cell but they don't see the creepy bug coming out of her. Later when Quan and Soren arrive, they discover all the guards are frozen in place. In the cells, Lyra screams because the lab assistant's body is mutating and reaches through the bars with a creepy arm. Luckily Ackerson is armed and immediately shoots her down, but other prisoners are mutating as well. Soren and Quan hear the screams and follow them, 
arriving just in time to shoot the monsters down and rescue Soren's family plus Ackerson. Back to John, he leaves Perez with the health unit and jumps out while he still hears the weird voice in his head. He reaches the main Covenant ship and finds no Makey, but Cortana's gadget is destroyed on the ground. Suddenly Cortana talks, revealing that she's integrated herself into the ship's system. She warns John that it's too late because the ship is on a collision course. Without hesitation, John smashes the ship's console and integrates himself with the AI. The ship crashes but John wakes up unharmed inside Halo. After picking up a plasma blade, John goes looking for Makey. At the same time Kai crashes a Covenant ship into a Covenant assault carrier. This gives humans the upper hand in the battle but also kills her in the process. At the facility, Margaret orders the soldiers to bring Halsey. Margaret wants her to talk sense into John, but Halsey refuses to help. Suddenly the technicians start attacking each other, meaning Halsey has brought the spore with her. The crew starts mutating and shows creepy alien parts, so Halsey runs out of the room and locks the door while Margaret is caught in the chaos. She makes it back to the lab and while looking at the research she suddenly freezes. A mark on her neck shows she's infected as well. The other scientists put her in a cryogenic chamber to halt the infection until they can find a cure. As Ackerson leads the group out of prison, they're surrounded by more mutants, so they open fire to defend themselves. Quan is surrounded and closes her eyes waiting for the end, but instead the mother appears and tells her that only she can save everyone. Thanks to the mother's power freezing the mutants, Quan can run away and rejoin the others to escape. Once everyone is out, Lyra closes the door while she's still inside because she's also infected. Moments later, John finds Makey and the Arbiter. The warriors can finally finish their duel and a vicious fight begins. Both of them use all the strength and after exchanging a variety of blows and shots, John knocks the Arbiter down and kills him with a plasma blade. Then Makey opens the door to an ancient building and again offers John to work together, but he refuses. Suddenly a series of structures rise from the Halo's surface at the same time the human fleet enters Halo's atmosphere. Makey enters the building and John follows her, finally finding a machine with the voice he's been hearing in his head. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.